More than a month after Vladimir Putin won a presidential vote beset by allegations of widespread fraud, Russia's opposition is sputtering. But the voices of protest can still be found all over Moscow on the walls of buildings everywhere as street art in the Russian capital goes political, taking their inspiration from the most famous street artist of them all, Britain's Banksy. Many in Russia are risking jail to get their message out. Moscow correspondent Norman Hermont reports. Not far from the centre of Moscow, these artists are back at work. Their canvas on this day, a gritty underpass by a busy rail line. Political protest on the streets may be fading, but on the walls, the bridges, any available space, it's thriving. Last two months, uh, Moscow street art community, it's uh, like a wave, big wave with a political idea and uh, some political stuff, uh, more and more political stuff. It's like big wall, woo, big wave. Up above, a lookout keeps watch. Police do little to fight regular graffiti, but do target street art that's political. These artists have been spotted and managed to get away. We are not so lucky. A policeman gives us the once over. He checks our documents and warns us this is no place for journalists. We escape with a warning. A little more than an hour later, the street artists are back. Others have been jailed for this. The risk, they say, is worth it. Mm, political graffiti, it's, uh, we, we, we can go to jail for this one. Mm, we need to do something to change life in this country. And it's, uh, it's our change, it's our world to people, to all, to government, uh, to people who do this country so terrible, you know? And uh, we need to change something. Vladimir Putin's disputed victory in Russia's presidential election has left many opposition supporters disheartened. For Moscow's street artists, it's a challenge. Street art and graffiti are nothing new to Russia's big cities, but artists like these say the cat and mouse game with government authorities is tougher than ever. The more political the message that goes up on buildings and underpasses, the more quickly it is painted over. Most political street art is gone after only a few days. That means you have to act fast to see the familiar stencil that appears regularly around the city that refers to Russia's political evolution as opposed to revolution. But there are also more crude approaches. This one says simply, Putin is a vampire. But not all the street art here is political. Some is social commentary. This is Pavel 183, a Russian street art legend. His work often focuses on the changes he sees in society. Lately, he says, those changes have been political. The street art has become a sort of weapon for activism fans who always talked about politics, at least in Russia. It has become so popular now, and I think the more the better. For Pavel 183, this isn't just about painting on a wall. It's also his living. This work, which features an artist writing about his love for a woman, is documented and signed. Darling, you're a fool, says the woman. No one will pay for that. The irony is, for Pavel 183, collectors do pay, sometimes thousands of dollars, for his work. Gallery curators say the demand for street art is climbing, especially since the opposition political movement burst into the open late last year. Here, street art from around the country is catalogued and shows are organized. Fans of the medium say the reason for its popularity is simple. Street art can speak directly to the people. It seems to me that if you are willing to reach people with a certain message, it is better to reach them directly, not those who sit in the Russian government. Back at the underpass, the finishing touches are going on a mural that takes aim at charges Vladimir Putin paid for the votes to win the presidential election. You can't buy everybody, it says. People can realize that in uh, our city uh, we, we have uh, uh, some kind of resistance. We have no choice. And uh, uh, our answer is just our We're talking by art. After several hours and one near brush with the law, their work is finished, and they head off into the night.
another tiny part of Moscow, where the protest against Vladimir Putin goes on. Norman Hermont, Laidline.